Hey guys, Pheromone here. I told you I owed you a box opening and I told you I owed you many box openings. So that is exactly what we're doing. Today we are going to be taking a look at Metal Raiders, which I'm so excited about because this is where like Yu-Gi-Oh happened. Legend of Blue Eyes, we already tore through the box. We actually got some really great hits from that. But this is where like just the weirdest, weirdest competitive influence in the game came from. And if you don't believe me, why don't we go ahead and crack open this box and really take a look in. So we're gonna go ahead and open Open things up here as we always do. We're just gonna split up in the left and right. You know, we tried the left side first and it was pretty solid, but I think today we're gonna try the right side first. Gosh, these boxes are beautiful. Now again, these are the 25th anniversary reprints, so they are gonna be a little different. We're not going through thousand dollar boxes here, but it's just nice to kind of, you know, think about these old nostalgic Yu-Gi-Oh memories where we were as duelists at the time and well, what it is that we're gonna be finding today that honestly can be like really, really hype because a lot of these cards actually came back over the years. So set the box aside and let's go ahead and crack in. Okay, so. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and we said the right side this time, so let's open up the right side. So we are going to go with our first pack here. And I know I'm excited about it. I know I'm always excited about anything related to Yu-Gi-Oh! But again, this is like a wild, wild box. Let's go ahead and start taking a look because the cards are going to count. Uh, again, we got Niwatori, Share the Pain, Swamp Battle Guard, but we also have Elegant Egotist, so the My Valentine takeover is finally getting here. But then we've got Sword of the Deep Seated. Sword of the Deep Seated is like such a, it, it sounds like it's a good card until it keeps showing up in your hand over and over and over because you've drawn it time after time after time. All right, sticking with the right side here. Elegant Egotist is good though. Harpy Ladies are not just a fan favorite, they're honestly just great. Uh, taking a look here, Soggy the Dark Clown. We also have Petite Moth and some friends. Ooh, Princess of Saruki, a little bit of damage there. But behind it is nothing yet. We do have Pump King, the King of Ghosts. And like everything from this era just has so many memories associated with it from, think about it, Duelist Kingdom, really early Yu-Gi-Oh! So even the Disc Magician definitely probably brings some joy to some Duelists out there because it's like, oh yeah, I remember Disc Magician. I definitely use that card. Right, but let's see what other cards we can find here. Kaminari Attack, Illusion Faceless Mage. Gosh, Illusion Monsters are so cool. Uh, Little Swordsman of Ale, Fake Trap. I have had so many duelists use Fake Trap against me because when you think about all the power cards back then, Heavy Storm, Hard Piece Feather Duster, but also it looks like Block Attack. So we, hey, we got our stop defense. Now we have our Block Attack. All right, so. I keep reaching for the left side. Usually, usually I start with the left side, but uh, we're gonna go for right and see if right is the right choice here. Looks like we've got Blue Wing Crown, Ancient Lizard Warrior, and Robin Goblin. Robin Goblin used to feel so good when you just were slowly but surely like reducing the resources of your opponent. Anything else here? Nope, looks like it's just gonna be Ancient Brain. Again, that was for just doing damage. You got to take a card out of your opponent's hand. And like, yeah, we had that, like White Magical Hats and later Don Saluk and Fronic Guardian. But like, it just was a trip. You were playing a beatdown deck and you were also reducing your opponent's resources there. It's pretty cool. Let me uh, try to reopen this pack here from the other end. Anything to get these precious Yu-Gi-Oh cards. All right, so. Got, ooh, Feral Imp. Been using that a lot in Rush Tools lately. Uh, Hyosube, uh, Cocoon of Evolution. We've also got, speaking of White Magical Hat, uh, but also, oh, nice. Karibo, an original point of interaction from the hand. Again, it explodes with the slightest touch if you listen to Yami Yugi. But again, just during damage calculation for your opponent monster attacks, quick effect, you can discard this card, you take no battle damage. Uh, there's gonna be no damage from that battle, but the, the idea of Karibo just felt good because, you know, you'd just be sitting there and you hadn't surrendered yet, and your opponent would be like, why are you still in this duel? And you'd be like, I don't know, why am I in this duel? So it's neat to get our first super, I'll go ahead and collect some of the normal rares and move these over to the side. Uh, nice, 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 nice. And it's a fiend, which works really well with uh, some of the very early archetype decks, or I guess subtype decks in this case. Uh, Dark Necrofear, loved Karibo. So it looks like we've got Mega Thunderball, we've also got Protector of the Throne, Labyrinth Tank, 
there's a harpy lady, but we also have great moth and looks like it's just going to be Ryu Kishin power with some other commons there. Uh, great moth didn't see a lot of it at the time. It's more of a card that really came back like over the years with other different support cards, but still, still fan favorite. There's still a lot of Weevil Underwoods. That might be one of them that just like sees great moth and thinks great things. Speaking of great things, though, what do we got in this pack? Oh, man, Musician King, Fusing. Uh, Witch of the Black Forest, the Lady of Faith. You never thought you'd get a Musician King out of that. But uh, we also have Armor Zombie. You know, Soul Release, this needs to go into a deck, like, right now. It's been pretty decent in the current Phantom Nightmare format, so I'm going to set that aside. Uh, Jedi Gumo, always fun. Muka Muka, and it looks like nothing but net behind it. So, man, Seven Colored Fish, Bistro Butcher, like, so many memories of, like, no, this was a decent 1800 attacker at the time, and so was Seven Colored Fish, especially if you were using with things like Umi and later Legendary Ocean. So very cool there. Uh, still going to the right side here. And if I mess up and I pull something from the left side, you let me know in the comments, because I'm trying, but uh, I just get excited. All right, so Cheerful Coffin, another really great Dark World card. Uh, we've also got Swamp Battle Guard, Blue Wing Crown. We have another Princess of Surugi, so we can do a little bit more damage there. But after that, just a Dragon Piper. So I know we made some jokes in the last video about Dragon Capture Jar. Still still not, not recommended, but you know, if you're gonna do it, you can still try, right? Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and take a look to see what we've got here and find out what's next. All right, so Fair Olymp again, very good. Uh, Crass Cloud, you know, this was part of a really good gravity bind strategy for just switch position. Wait, wait, what? Oh, when I switch the position, there's mass sorcerer, but more important is a secret rare copy of Gate Guardian right out of the box. God, that's gorgeous. And even with the little bit of secret rare holography going through the dark attribute and the star level, that is new. They didn't have that back in the day, so just neat. Okay, well, time for me to get a Brother's Paradox cosplay going on. Time to shave the head, but I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I would, well, for cosplay, we've done some crazy stuff before. But um, yeah, just, just neat stuff. You might have peeped that gazelle, uh, the mythical king of beasts as well, because, well, I mean, it's just one of those cards that has remained relevant over the years, especially Chimera, the flying mythical beast with all the new illusion support. But let's take a look at our next pack here. We've got Castle of Dark Illusions, always fun, Empress Judge, Starboy. This feels like another holographic card. Yes! Yes, change of heart. The Bakura in me is very pleased. Uh, yeah, just a great card. Finally came off the Forbidden Limited list, made all the new sites actually. Just just one of the best effects of Triple Tactics Talents is just to steal your opponent's monster. And so we actually got like some really like important stuff and we haven't even gotten through the right side yet. So let's go ahead and keep on moving here. All right. Like, a lot of these cards could, like, go in tournament-ready decks for my OTS store, like, tonight. Thinking about the Soul Release, the Change of Heart, even the Karibo's still good. Uh, after the Launcher Spider, looks like we're going to be looking at Milus Radiant, and... Oh, we did get another Hollow. It's going to be Twin-Headed Thunder Dragon. Wow, okay. Just a gorgeous card, and really neat support for Thunder Dragon has come out since then. I know there's actually a lot of fans of Thunder Dragon out there, but back in the day, it was just, like, a really cool way to make a cool fusion monster with 2800 attack. And later evolved into a Chaos Engine, actually, because by discarding those Thunder Dragons, you did get some Light and Darks in the graveyard, or at least some Lights. So you got some Lights and Darks, that's up to you, but hey, the Karibos, not a bad idea there either. All right, so, right side, last card here. And I definitely need more practice here, so hey, we'll just open more boxes. But Mask of Darkness, followed up by not just the Trent there, but Mask of Darkness was a very powerful card too. I remember uh, a Tsukiyomi Mask of Darkness time seal loop, where you basically just kept flipping it face up, grabbing that powerful trap card that prevents your opponent from drawing. You don't think we opened up a lot of packs, but man, just look at the common stack that we got there. So we'll just set that aside. Uh, oh, Starboy, you're in the wrong stack. All right, so. That means we got, just from that side alone, uh, Twin Head of Thunder Dragon, Karibo. We also got the Gate Guardian and Change of Heart. Don't worry, they're going in sleeves. They always end up in sleeves at some point. But let me go ahead and just splay these out here so you guys at home can see what you might get if you get one of these boxes. Your results may vary. But let's find out what is in the left side. We haven't even run into like the stuff that's crazy yet. Don't spoil the surprise. Spoil the surprise of a set that came out more than 20 years ago. But... 
it is true that like there's just some some great talking points of like how the game evolved over the years and it really started with this set after Kakuna Evolution I'm gonna pull that soul release hey it's Sangin very historic card but behind Sangin looks like another block attack so we'll just stop Sangin from attacking Sangin was a little different back in the day right it could immediately search monsters and there wasn't a restriction on whether or not their effects could be used like the modern copy of the card uh, I think they actually the text has been reprinted yeah you can only use this effect of Sangin once per turn is another thing but it's still good it's still really good uh, you don't necessarily have to just use it like a fiend deck with Tor God from the underworld although obviously they get along really well at least the plot seems to indicate that uh, although somebody needs to catch up fast and speaking of catching up let's go right back into our pack opening Sonky, Deep Sea Shark, another Petite Moth, uh, Water Moth. I think they would get a playset of Princess of Saruga now, but we also have Skull Knight. Okay, well, we've got some major hits. Sometimes you're gonna swing and not necessarily miss, but just not get a card that's relevant to you now. Uh, there's been common cards that have come back throughout the ages. Great examples like, like even like Drag Down Into the Grave is a great example when Dark World got very good. All of a sudden that card became very highly sought after. Hey, Starboy, good to see you again. But after that, just Dream Clown. For that clown control deck that we talked about before with Crass Clown and Dream Clown. Uh, just, just some neat ways to uh, take advantage of your gravity bind if uh, it might have been a couple of years ago or, well, it might be a Time Wizard tournament set to a certain time. Speaking of time, Time Wizard is in this set, so it would be pretty neat to be able to pull that out, but let's see what we get. Uh, Illusionist Faceless Mage, Ground Attacker Burkrot, Steel Scorpion, Ooh, Witch's Apprentice, one of the monsters that got retrained to a Link monster, and just Crawling Dragon after that, and Ryu Kishin Power. I mean, it's not bad. 1600 Attack Fiend is good. Uh, there was a lot of 1800 Attack Fiends at the time. Bistro Butcher, Legend, the Mystical Genie of the Lamp. But uh, not, not bad at all. Certainly good with the field spell. Uh, speaking of which... See what we feel. Okay, that feels like a hollow, just the fact that it immediately became Robin Goblin. Looks like we're gonna see. Ooh, tribute to the Dooms. Discard one card, target a monster on the field, destroy it. The spot removal was really powerful, and remember that Raigeki and Dark Hole historically have been at one uh, on the various Forbidden Limited list over the years. So, tribute to the Doom was not a waste. It could also get a powerful monster ready to Monster Reborn. Although, I don't wanna mix those cards, right? Because these are our cards from the left stack. So we'll move the Robin Goblin aside. There's like, there's like playable stuff in here. There's actually playable stuff. Are you gonna win your next regional championship with it? Maybe, that's for you to decide. I'm not gonna judge you. All right, but speaking of which, let's see if we pull something worth judging in here. All right, Cheerful Coffin again, another Dark World. That's staple, but good card. Uh, Launcher Spider, Ancient Lizard Soldier, Shadow Ghoul. And looks like after the Shadow Ghoul, just nothing but net there. Shadow Ghoul obviously getting a recent reprint in Maze of Memories. It's still neat to be able to see that like Gate Guardian cards got playable last year and Flame Swordsman cards got playable this year. Uh, take a look, ooh, germ infection. Careful, wash your hands. Uh, looks like we got some other comments here. Hyosube, Akubim, Milus Radiant. And after that, Mystic Horseman and nothing else. The Ring of Magnetism was interesting. I, I saw some Duelist experiment with that back in the day, but uh, didn't, didn't catch on. That's probably why you haven't heard of it at least recently. Uh, looks like we're coming down to five packs here. We already got our secret rare. Gate Guardian is nothing to sneeze at, but uh, mind another ultra rare. Speaking of which, let's see what we get in this pack. It's going to be ooh, Magician of Faith. So good. Like, if you play goat format, you know, right? Time Wizard, July 2005, but it looks like she is protecting nobody. But she is just an awesome card, honestly with things like Metamorphosis that can out later her one star which used to be really bad turned out to be like the best star level you could be and the fact that she was light also added to chaos so it's a really fun adventure that we're taking through memory lane but these memories have power right i mean a lot of these memories have been forbidden at one point or another yes you probably got the Yu-Gi-Oh joke i was making speaking of Yu-Gi-Oh jokes mask of darkness is no joke and the fact that there's three commons i think we're seeing another hollow it is oh yes Yes, the Joey Wheel of Fanamy is very happy to see Time Wizard. Oh man, Time Wizard's really cool too because it really did some work in Magician's Force with Apprentice Magician being able to set that tiny little dark spellcaster, being able to set this face down with its effect, flip the face up, call that coin in the air, and uh, well, you know, maybe you destroy all your monsters and take some damage, but it's still really exciting to have. So based on what we pulled out of the last box, I don't think we're gonna get too many more hollows unless things are crazy, right? We've gotten uh, a super, two ultra, or excuse me, three supers, two ultras, and a secret. So we're 
probably are looking at maybe just like one more super out of just these last packs. Uh, last chance to comment now to find out which one it is with no spoilers. All right, so going through after the Huck P Lady, which is the Black Forest. That's neat. Same idea with Sangin. Again, very historic card. Um, I always thought it was like a little better than Sangin because of the targets that it could pull at the time. Uh, Jinzo, Summon Skull, really good stuff there. Hey, but Sangin could still pull out Witch of the Black Forest. Now that's changed since then. Now the smaller monsters are, well, the ones that are more impactful in a duel. But at the time, man, Witch of the Black Forest was it. She was a quick fast pass to getting some of your favorite cards. Speaking of favorite cards, Looks like we got Blue Wing Crown, Sangam, and ooh, Harpy Lady Sisters. So we did get the Elegant Egotist. So now we can bring out the Harpy Lady Sisters. These were recently converted into a maximum mode monster that you can play in Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. But like seeing the classic card, right? Just the 1950 didn't seem like much at the time, but I've had real duels where this got real scary real fast. So don't get about, we also got Thunder Dragon. I'll have to take a look to see if I missed some Thunder Dragons earlier in the common stack. All right, so about four supers, two ultras, one secret. Can we beat our last record? It would have to be something. Could be anything. But let's find out what we got. Mushroom Man after Tongyol. We also have Empress Judge. Big Eye doesn't look good for us. Shield and Sword. Okay, that's fine. And looks like after that, just gonna be nothing but net. But Shield and Sword's really neat too. Again, another Rush Duel, almost staple, right? It is a legend card after all. But like, just awesome stuff here. We did get some of the crazier things that I was hoping to see, like Seven Tools of the Bandit, Mirror Force, Magic Jammer. There's some really incredible cards. Hey, but you know what that means? We just gotta open up another box. If any of these were your favorites, let me know. I think that there's a lot of fan service amongst this set of cards. Again, this was during an era where you saw it on the show, then you opened it in the pack, but Man, man, this time wizard needs to go right to sleeve because it's so cool. And I know someone just like, show the gate guardian. Fine, I'll show the gate guardian again. Man, secret rares are it, especially when the light catches them just right and you get to see all that shine. Okay, well, guess I'll go build my gate guardian deck. But until then, we'll see you in the next one. And hey, hopefully you pull a great card sometime soon. Take care.